welcome back to part three. In this part, we'll focus on interactive input and output, or I.O. Nearly every computer system and language has support for what are called standard streams. These include the standard input, the standard output, and the standard error, which is another output stream. We can interact with these streams using the standard I.O. library. For our purposes, the standard input is essentially the keyboard, and we can read data from it using the scanf function. The standard output is the console or terminal where the output messages are printed. To interact with this stream, we use the printf function. We'll revisit the standard error output when we get to file I.O. The scanf function is short for scan formatted. The first argument you provide to this function is a string delimited by double quotes that holds a formatted placeholder. Each variable type has its own placeholder. For integers, we use %d, which stands for digit value. For doubles, we use %lf, which is shorthand for long float. For single character values, we use %c. The second argument is the variable where you want the input data to be stored. A big point of caution here is that you must put an ampersand in front of the variable. Failure to do so will likely result in a fatal error or segmentation fault. We'll understand why this is when we get to functions and pass by reference. Scanf actually supports a variable number of arguments, but we'll keep things simple. So we'll only read in one input at a time. Let's take a look at an example. First, I'll declare some variables. Now let's prompt the user for an integer input. I'll use scanf with the percent %d placeholder because I want to read in an integer. I then provide the variable that I want the value stored in. Again, you need to put an ampersand in front of it. To make sure that this works, let's go ahead and print it back out to the user. Let's do a similar code snippet for the double value x. Now let's compile and run this program. Let's see what happens when we fail to use the ampersands. We get a warning and a segmentation fault, a fatal error. Again, we'll understand this later when we get to functions and pass by reference. To support output in our example, we use the printf function, which is similarly short for print formatted. As with scanf, the first argument is a string containing what we want printed. Mostly the placeholder values are the same, %d for integers, but for double values, we use %f instead of %lf. We still use %c for characters. Optionally, you can include any number of placeholders to print variable values. After the string value, each subsequent value is a variable that you want printed. Each placeholder is ultimately replaced with the variable value that you want to print. Thus, you must specify exactly as many variables as there are placeholders. Of course, you don't need to print variable values at all. You can simply print a text message by itself. Let's look at some more examples. First, you can print a message without any placeholders at all. You can also print additional formatting. Backslash T gives you a tab, an indentation. You can provide multiple placeholders and print multiple variable values with one statement.
the three placeholders must correspond to the three variables provided after the string. So here, order matters. We also use a backslash n to end the line and go to the next line. You might be asking yourself, how do we get a percentage since it's used in the placeholder values? You simply use two of them. Let's run this program. We didn't have a backslash n with our first print statement or the second, so everything runs on the same line. Let's go fix that now. You can add multiple end line characters if you want. There's the tab, and here are the multiple empty lines. When we printed a floating point value, it printed out to six decimal points of accuracy. This is, in fact, the default behavior of the printf function. We can change this default behavior by specifying additional modifiers in our placeholder. We can specify two numbers, n and m, in front of the f, separated by a period. m specifies the number of decimals of accuracy. n specifies the minimum number of total columns to print, which includes the decimal point. Optionally, a negation can be used to justify it left instead of a default justify right. Again, let's take a look at some examples. Here I'm using a website called REPL that allows me to compile and run code directly in my browser. I've defined pi out to seven decimal points of accuracy, but when I run it, it only prints six because that's the default. Let's change that. Let's only print three decimal points of accuracy. Both modifiers are optional, so I haven't specified the first one in this example. And it only prints out to three decimal points of accuracy. Another thing to note is that it rounded for us. That did not change the value of pi. Instead, it only rounded for the purposes of printing it out. Let's print out five decimal points of accuracy. Let's print out a lot of decimal points of accuracy. Lots of garbage out there. Remember that doubles are only good for 16 to 17 digits of accuracy. So it's just garbage after that. Let's use the other modifier. This will print out only two decimal points of accuracy, but it'll print out a minimum of 10 columns. 3.14 are four columns, so there are six columns preceding it to the left. If I wanna print out four decimal points of accuracy with a minimum of four columns, I get no padding in front because 3.1416 is already six columns, which already exceeds my minimum specified. The negation simply justifies it left. You can't see it here, but there are six columns, that is six spaces, that come after the 3.14. A final note on good code style. When you write code, you should make every effort to make it readable and easily understood. Code itself should be self-documenting. That means that anybody familiar with the language should be able to read your code and understand what it does without too much thought. Your code should be straightforward and clear. To that end, you should use accurate descriptive variable names and consistent naming conventions as previously mentioned. However, this also includes using whitespace effectively. Mashing your code together by not using whitespace makes it less readable. Using consistent indentation also helps with readability. Nested code blocks should be indented and code that is at the same level should be indented the same amount. This is similar to an outline or a bullet pointed list. Sublists are indented and points on the same level have the same indentation so that they're all vertically aligned. 
We'll point out more best practices and coding style as we go along. The best thing that you can do for yourself is to get in that good habit of writing good, clean code from the beginning. Don't start bad habits and think that you can simply go back and clean up and reformat your code. You can, but it'll make you lazy and put you in the mindset of writing bad code. 